Hello, my darlings. It's ALB in Whisperland here. Thank you so much for joining me for tonight's video. As probably a lot of you know by now, I love vintage fashion. I just love it. So tonight, we're doing kind of like a big sort of vintage, specifically 60s, specifically Joan inspired hairdo. I got the big earrings going. Kind of sound nice, don't they? They're nice to tap on. They're a little bit heavy to wear, but I just love them too much to not, so. <laughs> Today, I want to talk a little bit about vintage fashion and care. So, for me, just personally, the eras of fashion that I love the most are the 40s, the 50s, and the 60s. Those are my favorites. I just love them the most. And what is so great about living in this century that we live in is that we have just so much access to not only vintage fashion archives and information, but to true vintage authentic pieces. And on top of that, we have access to so many companies that make vintage reproduction clothing, which is basically clothing that is made to look like it was from the era or clothing that's made from patterns, you know, from those eras. Either way, they're made now. They're made in, in sizing that's more accessible for a lot of people. And they also fit the undergarments that we wear now in modern times a little bit better. But the thing about um, buying and collecting and wearing vintage clothing is sometimes when you get them, because they're one of a kind and unique, and they might be 50, 60, 70 years old, they might not be in the best condition ever. Sometimes you can get mint condition clothing, but even then, sometimes it's been sitting in a thrift store or consignment store for a good chunk of time, and it might have a, a dingy quality or a smell. Sometimes when you get vintage pieces, they have stains in them, um, whether it's just from wear and tear, or it could be a little bit of yellowing under the um, underarm, because that just happens. You know, people wear stuff and they sweat, and that gets yellow if it's a lighter color piece. It just happens with vintage clothing. So today I want to talk a little bit about how we can kind of revitalize those pieces to make them special, to make them wearable, but even if you don't plan to wear them, you just are a collector, it'll make them nicer. It'll just, you know, bring life back into stuff. For myself, I don't buy anything that I don't plan to wear. So I want all my stuff to look nice, to look, you know, what would you call it, like, world-ready. Um, and that can be hard when you buy true vintage pieces. They sometimes have little weird coloring or funky smells or things like that. And with a little bit of love and TLC, those pieces can be just so revitalized and just full of love and ready for you to wear and enjoy again. I think that it's cheesy, but the more love that you put into your clothes and the more you take care of them, you'll feel so nice when you wear them. You just feel the love that you put in to make them look bright and clean and smell nice and it just it makes you feel more confident, you know? Um, so that's what we're going to be getting into today. So today's video is sponsored by Method, one of my favorite home products brands. I really just love their stuff. You guys know that I'm really picky about scents. I'm really picky about scents. I don't like things that smell 
too artificial or soapy or things like that. But Method's products smell really, really good and they do a great job. So Method's products are naturally derived and they have so many, like, really good smells. The laundry products I'm going to be using in this video all work together to help keep your garments smelling like not only fresh, but in the specific scent profile of your choice, which is really cool. So basically with Method, you can pick a scent that you like from their lineup, and then they most likely have detergent, like fabric softener, laundry sheets, all of that in the scent that you chose, so they're all working together. There are so many good scents too, like they have a coconut and cactus water, and they had um, lavender and cypress, which really interests me, but it will come as no surprise to any of you that I decided I wanted to use the ginger and mango scent. Come on, like how perfect is that for me? I had to try it. So today for the video, we're going to be working with two true vintage pieces because I just think it's like the ultimate test to see how things go is with vintage clothing. But you can use this knowledge with any clothing, even brand new stuff. Um, and I do recommend with any vintage clothing, if you're using it with a detergent or any product, do a little spot test in like an inconspicuous place on the clothing just to make sure everything works well together because you just don't know. And like I said, with vintage clothing, it's usually one of a kind. It never hurts to do just a little spot test. You won't regret it. <laughs> so let me show you the pieces. So this is our first piece that I'm going to be working with today. I actually just got this um, from a really cool vintage store downtown. I haven't worn this yet because I haven't washed it yet. It's kind of an interesting, delicate fabric. Um, this is actually the belt, but I just have it hung around the neck because we're going to have to take it off to wash it anyway. So the fabric is like it's kind of sheer. Like, I'm definitely going to have to wear a slip underneath. And it's, I think it's a polyester blend. The thing about vintage clothing, there's not always tags on it. So you don't always know exactly what the washing instructions are. With a dress like this, because it's from the 60s and because it's like an interesting knit of mixed origin materials. We're gonna hand wash this today. It's not hard to hand wash and I think that's probably gonna be a big takeaway. I think when we think about hand washing pieces, we think it's gonna be hard. It's not hard to hand wash stuff. Um, and yeah, this is the dress. It's from the 60s. I love it. Hopefully you can... Yeah, you can see it okay. It has this really interesting collar, which I love. And come on, the colors are so good. It does have a couple of small damages, and we're going to get into that when we take a look at this piece. Um, but yeah, so we're going to be hand washing this one. The other one that I have today, I have this piece which You've definitely seen me wear before. Um, I don't think for a little while, though. This is um, from the 70s. And this is like kind of your standard... Um, it's a cotton dress. It's all cotton. So with this kind of piece, you can go ahead and throw it in the washing machine. Throw it in the dryer. It's gonna... Like, it's gonna wear well. It's a little bit of an easier piece to handle. It has this really nice collar. You know, you know I love gingham. I, I can't help it. I am a sucker for gingham. Anything gingham, I love it. I've loved it for years. I can't
can't help myself. <laughs> so when I saw this in a, I think it was the same, the same vintage store I got the other dress at actually, but like two years prior. That's so funny. Um, yeah, this is just such a cute piece and really easy to wear and to, to wash and take care of. So, but to be honest, I haven't worn it for a little while. It needs a little bit of love. So we're going to be doing this one today too. I love both of these pieces, but I think that for me to feel confident to wear them and feel like good and sparkly in my best self, they do need a little bit of love, especially this knit one that's from the 60s. It has a little bit of that thrift store smell. If you like vintage clothing or anything toys, you know what I'm talking about. It's just the smell of being in a warehouse. Um, and, you know, I don't really like that smell. <laughs> so I want to, I want to give it life. I want to make it new. It does have a couple of little stains too. Let's get into that. We'll take a quick look first at some of the different products we have here from Method. This first one is the laundry detergent. And I really love the color. Not that the color really contributes to the effectiveness, but it just looks so... It looks really cheerful to me. Especially, um, ginger mango. It's a very cheerful and happy sort of looking thing, isn't it? I love the sounds it makes. Especially for tapping. They're good sounds. You don't need too much of this product, but for the sake of with vintage clothing, I may use a little more than is necessarily needed, just so that I'm really, like, permeating the fabric. sincere way until I started to live on my own. I think it's because you just kind of take a new interest in everything you do for yourself when you live on your own. All the minutia of everyday life suddenly becomes very interesting. But you know, by smell. Anything that has a scent aspect, I find interesting. I can't help but play with the lids on anything. That's one of my favorite ASMR triggers, is lids. I always do that, especially with skincare and stuff too. This is a nice package. The packaging is nice. Now, let's take a little look at these ginger mango dryer sheets. The packaging is very cheerful. I like to trace D, A, Y, A, 
kind of smell them from here. <laughs> they smell nice. This is the kind of Sort of sticky finger sounds, I feel. What does it say? Reduces static on fabrics. Gosh, I have such a hard time with that in the winter. I think it's the combination of winter and apartment living. Just everything gets so staticky. All the time. And then if you have cats, Forget about it. My hair is staticky. My clothes. So, I need all the help I can get. It's not too bad in the summer, though. Winter, it's a, <laughs> another story. I like the sounds this makes. I try to coordinate my nails. I think pink and orange look nice together. If I did them orange, they wouldn't stand out. <laughs> it needs to be a little... a little something. I like that it says on the side of the box. They feel really cool to touch, actually. <laughs> like, they're prickly, but mm, soft prickly. It's designed to, I think, get in the fabric and kind of scrub a little bit, but gently. I like to touch this. I wish I had a little face scrubby like that. That would be nice. So it comes out from It back on. I love the way it sounds. So nice. Brush the stain away. Alright, and now we're going to look at these fragrance boosters. This is my first time using fragrance boosters, so I'm really excited about that. Because, especially with this fragrance booster, it adds a burst of scent. I just, I really like the scent of this. So, you can see all the little beads in there. They're supposed to dissolve. Completely in the water. 
which is really cool. Kind of like a little bath bomb for your fabric. They're so small and so light. Look at how tiny they are. They're just like little gems or little jewels. Squeeze to sniff the stuff. So you can hear This is so that when you're in the store, you can kind of test the scent to see if you like it. These are so fun to play with. I could do this for a long time, actually. I like the noise they make. when I'm doing cleaning, anything, I'm just like that about my hands because I have hands on camera, so I protect them. Here we have the dress. So, I'm just going to take it off the hanger. We need to do a little bit of work on this before we can hand wash it. Like I said, I don't know exactly what material I gotta take this belt off to. I'm gonna wash it, but just not attached to the dress. I don't know the exact material this is made of, so I'm gonna hand wash this in cool water. Um, but I need to treat some stains first. So, a lot of times, um, with vintage clothing, like, even if, even if it doesn't seem like there's yellowing under the armpits, that can make itself known later on. Like, this one isn't too bad, but I, it has a little bit of yellowing, and here's, I don't know if you can see this quite too well. Yeah, so... This is the stain. Uh, my theory is that it's a permanent marker stain because the thrift store that I bought it from, they use permanent marker to make their tags to put the prices, so I think that that's what this is. So I'm going to squeeze a little bit of the stain remover on it and kind of use the brush I'm pushing it. A little bit more, I need. <laughs> I can see it's already starting to create some movement with the stain, so that's good. Get in there. Please help me get this stain out. I'm just 
trying to not scrub the surface too hard. Just trying to permeate the fabric. And I'm just going to use my hands here to kind of rub it in. I don't want to damage the fabric, but I want to get it super saturated. So, with the stain remover, um, you like put it into the stain get it in there real good and then let it sit for a couple of minutes before washing look at this oh my goodness well I'll be darned <laughs> I don't even think I can see I can't really see the stain now oh, really I want to really get it in there you couldn't really see the stain on the front to begin with so like I said, I don't think it doesn't seem like it's picking up on camera too well, but there's a slight, slight yellowing in the underarm here, which is only going to get worse with time. There's been plenty of times where I've bought vintage clothing that had no, like, damages at all and then did not wear them, just had them in my closet and literally just time changed the coloring alright, so we're gonna let this sit for a couple of minutes and get our water ready I have this tub it's like a container, I use this all the time and we've got cold water in here not like ice cold, but just not we're going to use the Method Laundry Detergent and in the Ginger Mango scent, of course I'm going to fill... Mm, I think almost a whole cap, like three quarters I don't know that I really need this much, probably not, but I really want to... I really want to get this clean and prepared for me to wear well, I want to wear it and feel like you know, like almost like I'm wearing it for the first time because the truth is with vintage clothing maybe you are the first wear maybe you're not at all like there's really no way of knowing I put my clothes back on okay so I'm just gonna kind of stir the water a little bit and make sure that the soap is all mixed in I'm not trying to make bubbles or anything just keep it mixed here we go so this dress was sitting for a couple of minutes and now into the mixture it goes I think that a lot of people think hand washing is hard or that it's going to be super labor intensive it's not. I mean, I just, this is how I do it. I just put the piece of clothing in with the detergent and the water, and I just kind of move it around a whole bunch. I'm not really gonna, like, scrub this with any tools. I might scrub it with my hands a little bit, but most of the time when I do something like this, if I have like fancy clothes that I want to be extra careful with or fancy undergarments or anything like things you're just not sure about the wash I'll just throw on a movie or a TV show and I can just sit and do this in 10 minutes or less because really the whole point in this part is to just make sure the clothing is super saturated um, with the soapy water and just move it around a bit for a couple of minutes it doesn't take any vigorous effort or it's not physically exerting much at all I just I'm gonna try to scrub these spots where I had the um, stain remover but the average piece of hand wash clothing you don't need to do too much to it Move it around in the water. You can see we're starting to get bubbles now. 
bubbles, bubbles, bubbles. Just trying to move it around and get everything completely set. Kind of fun. Alright, so I've decided that I want to add some of the fragrance boosters to this as well. Because I love the way this smells and I want it to smell even more like that. So here we have those cute little gems of fragrance boost. So you can put these in cold water or warm water. I think a lot of people think this type of thing is just for like um, hot water or like putting it in the washing machine. But really you can put it in hand wash stuff as well. If you don't have a container at home, you can always use um, a sink. Just make sure that you clean it out really, really well first, so that it doesn't, you know, there's no weird residues or anything that get on your clothing. I have a friend who once uh, told me she does her hand washing in the bathtub, which I thought was so cute. <laughs> it's whatever is, you know, accessible for you. I like to do it in the because then I can watch a movie or a show while I do it. <laughs> I like to be entertained by something. It's kind of the same for me with folding laundry. I really like to do it with a podcast or something like that. Look at these little gems all sprinkled in. So... These are, they're all gonna dissolve, but I'm gonna mix them together just to kind of really get it in there. Just a light mixing of this very delicious smelling soup. <laughs> Not delicious, I guess. I'm inviting. Look at all these bubbles. So, I'm not going to work this too much more. It's pretty saturated. The next step is to just leave it for a little bit. I usually would leave it for just 15 to 20 minutes. It doesn't take very much time. Of course, if it's a piece of clothing you have not washed before, just check back on it every couple minutes, see how it's doing. In the meantime, let's throw that beautiful cotton dress in the wash. Dresses like this are so easy to wear and easy to wash because you can just, you know, use detergent and hot water in the wash and just throw it in and then put it in the dryer when you're done. As long as you hang it up after, they usually don't wrinkle. So I'm doing one cup in here. Probably could use a little bit less, but I really, with vintage stuff, I want to make sure it's getting really, really clean. But I don't think you need. This stuff's pretty concentrated. You don't need too much of it. And of course, we've got to do our fragrance boosters here. noises they make. <laughs> I just put one cup in. I think that, well, you're supposed to do two cups for a full load of laundry, but since it's just the dress and a couple other small things in this laundry load, I think it's fine. And then she goes. See you on the So, I'm going to rinse out the hand wash dress in the sink. 
And like I said, you want to make sure your sink is really already clean. When you do something like this, take the extra time, clean your sink. Because <laughs> the worst would be to hand wash something, go to all the time and energy to do that, and then get carrots or something on your, on your piece of clothing. Just rinsing out the container so I can put it back away. Just getting all the bubbles. Oh, I'm going to rinse this really well in the sink here in cold water once again. Um, you could put it in uh, like a delicate cycle in the wash with no detergent, but personally I don't really think that that's necessary as long as you're doing a really good job to get all of the detergent out. So you just want to rinse it until the water runs clear and you can tell them that, you know, the detergent's out because when you squeeze it, there will be no bubbles. That's the, that's the, the good test. Is if you squeeze it and there's no bubbles that come out, it's usually on its way to being clean. You want to make sure there's no detergent, otherwise your fabric will feel a little funny to the touch. And let's pop that cotton dress in the dryer. And we're going to use one of these handy dandy dryer sheets. These you actually can tear in half and put them in so it kind of breaks it up in the dryer, the scent. And as well, I'm going to throw the other dress in there too. So now I would love to do with you, if you don't mind, a little bit of folding. I have some clothes here. Just move this to the side. Get a nice clean space in front of us. I have a couple of pieces of clothing here that I think would be and I'll show you how I like to fold my stuff. Those things um, you may have to hang, but things like these jean shorts are great to fold. And I'm going to show you a little trick. Well, a couple little tricks that I like to do. So, rolled cuffs are something that look so cute on both pants, shorts, shirts, everything. The key to doing rolled cuffs is to roll them before you put them on. I think a lot of people make the mistake. Fold that really tight there. Look at that crease. <laughs> they make the mistake, in my opinion, of trying to roll things when they're wearing them. And they just don't roll right. Because you see, I can press these seams. And when you roll this, roll the cuffs on something and then put your clothes away. They keep that shape a little bit better. So, those look nice. I had a friend out at dinner the other night. They saw my t-shirt that I had rolled sleeves on and they said, they actually said, you know, how do you get your rolled cuffs to look so good? And honestly, that's my biggest trick is to roll those cuffs really well before you put them on and then you can get those perfect creases. So I just, for these, folded them in half and then folded them in half again. These have been kind of my go-to shorts so far this summer. They look really nice all folded up, I think. So there's the shorts. Let's do like a knit. This is a sweater. I love this lavender color. So sweaters, they are really good to put in a drawer instead of hanging up. I find that when I hang sweaters, they get like weird lumps in the shoulders. I'm not a fan. So I like to start by 
folding the sleeves in towards the middle like this. And I'll take either a hand or two fingers and fold the sleeve up upon itself like that. And we'll go ahead and do it on the other side here, like so. And we're going to fold the sleeve back up. You can readjust if you need to. And then always lightly press out the seams. Like that. Okay, so now we're going to fold it in half and then fold it in half again. And I like to not have it be perfectly in half. You can see that little top there. I like to have just a little bit peeking out so you can kind of see a little bit more. I mean, obviously, with a sweater like this, you know which sweater it is. But for, you know, if you have a bunch of black t-shirts, that'll have a different thing on the front that can help you. So this is another knit sweater. This one is like a nice mint color. This one's cute. It has an open back here. Take a look. It's not cute. But we're going to do pretty much the same kind of thing. We're going to bring the sleeves in. We're going to flatten them out a little bit first, though. Make sure you don't have weird creases and everything. Otherwise, they'll set right into the fabric. There's one sleeve. I'll straighten that out. I'm going to use two fingers here and fold the sleeve right back upon itself. Like so. And then we'll do the other one over here. This sweater has really cute little kind of striped, like a rib kind of appearance on the sleeves. I love that. And then we'll fold it over and fold it on itself again. Then I left, like I said, a little bit here to help. Distinguish it. We'll do one more. Look at this guy. So this is a short sleeve knit. It's still a knit sweater though, but the same rule applies. We'll do the first sleeve there, fold it towards the middle. You know, I worked retail for a long time, but I never had a job where I had to fold clothes like this. So I learned a lot from just watching YouTube videos. It can be kind of meditative to do this. There we go. And smooth it all out. Now, I'm going to give you one more tip. This one is from my mom, so shout out to my mom for teaching me this. <laughs> Which is that if you like a little something extra in terms of scent, once upon a time, people used to make little sachets of potpourri, but we're not going to use that. We're going to use dryer sheets. It's nice when your clothes in your drawers to take a dryer sheet and you can just put it in the drawer, but it's nice to put it between a couple articles of clothing just to really keep that freshness in. I think you could get away with it. Just doing one sheet per drawer. But it, it's like a little extra touch and it keeps your drawers really nice. Also, if you are the sort of person who has four seasons where you live and you like to pack summer clothes away or winter clothes away, just go ahead and throw, you know, a dryer sheet in with your clothes you pack away keeps them a little nicer. So we'll tuck that in right there. And then put that right on top. And you can't even tell it's there, but it adds a little something extra, which I like. <laughs> it's nice to be a little extra, especially when it's about keeping your clothes nice, I think. And now I think our dress should be done in the dryer. So here is the knit 60s dress. 
all dry and freshly clean and I have to say this is my first time wearing it. I'm so happy. I love it. I love the color. I I think I'm gonna wear it this weekend going out actually. Um yeah, I I feel it smells really good too, so I hope that some of the tips in this video were helpful to you and that you can like uh, use them and how you love and care for your clothing. I should give you a little bit of a look at this. So cute, right? I just love it. It's so colorful. Thank you all so much for watching. Thank you, Method, for sponsoring this video. I hope that you all have a wonderful night. And please leave in the comments if you're into vintage clothing collecting too. Or if you've got something else that's kind of your thing, your hobby, you know. I think that it's so wonderful that we have the internet because I've learned about so many different things and including vintage fashions that I didn't know about. I just think it's amazing that we have that and that's why I'm so glad even though I love old stuff. I also love new stuff because we get to enjoy the old stuff even more and we get to meet new friends who love it too. <laughs> so have a wonderful night everyone. I love you so much. Bye for now.